So we missed you at our algebra class meeting today on May 6th. Um, I'm going to take you through some activities. We started off with a math estimation warm up. You might want to pause the video and get people in your house to come and estimate with you because it's fun to compare what you think to others. So my question is, how many glass gems are in this glass? Think of a number. And share it with the people that you're with. And the reveal, there are 25 glass gems. I'm going to show you a second version of the same setup with a different number of glass gems. I want you to notice that there are some clues here. There is a small toy car. There is a die back here. And all of this is set up on a clipboard that's probably right about the same size as your binder to help you with estimating. Make your second estimation. Fourteen last gems this time. Take a look at this third cup. Well, <laughs> the same cup, it's just got more in it. Make an estimation and justify why you think your number is the right number. The reveal, 51 glass gems this time. And the final. Thirty-seven glass gems. When you watch this video, go back to Google Classroom and let me know how close you were to thirty-seven, and that way I can give you credit for being part of this class meeting. So, what I want to do next is an activity using our document camera and a video that um, I'm gonna show you on my screen that I'll narrate. So we have been practicing multiplying polynomials. So I'm gonna show you this polynomial, negative two x to the third, which is a monomial, multiplied by three x squared, negative four x plus seven. So we have a monomial multiplied by a trinomial. The traditional way to do this is distribution. And so I've drawn my claw to show what I'm distributing. Negative 2x to the third would have the negative 2 times positive 3, giving us a negative 6. x to the third would be added to x to the second, because this is an x to the third times an x to the second. It's not a power to the power. That would be something that looked like this, where there's no other variable with this. Instead, I've got like bases, so I'm going to add these, and I get x to the fifth. And then I get negative 2x to the third times negative 4x. Negative 2, negative 4 gives me positive 8, x to the fourth minus 14x to the third. And that works just fine. We're able to distribute in that way and not get too confused. It's not my preferred way to do it though. I like to set it up with what we call the box method or it's similar to an area model. And I'm gonna take my box and I'm gonna put my first term here and then the second set of terms up above. And I'm going to multiply each like a times table where these two end up here, and these two end up here, and these two end up here. And I end up with the same answer, negative 6x to the fifth plus 8x to the fourth minus 14x to the third. And that works just fine. But what I want to show you next is what has commonly been returned, referred to as the FOIL method of multiplying um, polynomials. 
And then I'm going to show you how to do the same problem using a, um, a box method and see which one you prefer. Okay, so I'm going to show you this video, which is part of our textbook. I don't think you can hear the sound, so I'll just do some narration and possibly pause it. I want you to pay attention to what she's putting in the parentheses. She's taking this 8x from up here and putting it here. And then this binomial is going to end up in parentheses here. And then watch what she puts next. Okay, what she's going to do next is going to set this up like it would. I'll show you with the FOIL method, which is the way your parents and I would have learned this. Um, what I don't love about this method is it's just a lot of steps. So watch what she's going to do next. She's going to take this 8x and distribute it to the 2x plus 5, and then the 4 and distribute it to the 2x plus 5. So now that everything is distributed, she's going to multiply and we're going to end up with 8 times 2x is going to be 16x squared and you'll watch and see what happens with the next few. So if you notice here, we do have some like terms. They happen to be in the middle next to each other here. So all that she has left to do is to add 40x and 8x. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I want you to look at all of the steps that had to happen to get this down to 16x squared plus 48x plus 20. And I'm going to bring us back and share a different screen and go back to my doc camera. And I'm going to show you, it's very similar to what she just did, but the way that I learned this, and like I said, your parents probably learned it, is FOIL, which stands for first, outer, inner, last. And it's a way of keeping track of distribution. 
So first, these two are the first terms in both binomials. And then outer to outer. So 8x times 2x plus the outer two terms, the first one and the outer one on the other end, 8x plus 5, or times 5. And then inner is here, plus 4 times 2x. And last would be, this is the last in the first term, and this is the last in the second. <clears throat> or not the term, this is the last in the first binomial, this is the last in the second binomial, and we would end up with four times five. Okay, and very similar to what we just saw her do, 16x squared plus 40x plus 8x plus 20, and it gets reduced down to 16x squared plus 48x plus 20. Now, what I don't love about this and what I had as problems when I was an algebra student is sometimes you lose terms. Like sometimes people forget to do this middle one or something. And that it's not so difficult to do when there's a binomial times a binomial, <clears throat> but it can be really challenging when we have trinomials. So first thing I'd like to do is show you how to rewrite the same problem, but instead of using distribution in this drawing arrows and multiplying lines it way, I want to show you it with the box method. And you just draw a box that has a, the same number of <coughs> squares on the inside as the terms that we have. So I'm going to take this first binomial, this is 8x, and this is positive 4. Then across the top we're going to do 2x and positive 5. And basically what we've just done with this box is we've set up a mini times table. Now I'm going to take these two and multiply it to here, and these two and multiply to here. These two will be here, and these two will be here. 16x squared, 8x, 40x, and 20. And one of the things I love about this is every time you do this, you end up diagonally with your like terms. And so we see here, this and this is my 48x. So I get 16x squared plus 48x plus 20. When you compare that to what we saw in our video of all the different, we're going to distribute once and we're going to distribute again, or this method that I learned as an algebra student, <clears throat> this is just a cleaner way of doing it in my view, and you don't lose terms or negatives. Negatives get lost a lot when you're doing that. I think it's really important to know this version because we're not going to be multiplying just binomials times binomials. We're going to have things like this binomial times this trinomial. And what I'd like to do with this is rewrite it where two are going to be going down the side because I have a binomial. And three are going to go across the top. Again, it's like we're making our own little times table. Sorry, let me adjust my camera so I can still write and you can see. I have 4x squared times 5x and I get 20x to the third. 4x squared times negative 2 gives me negative 8x squared. 5x times 3x gets me 15x squared. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. Negative 5x because of negative 1 times 5x. And negative 1 times negative 2 gives me a positive 2. Now notice, like terms, like terms. This combined huh, I did this wrong in my earlier version. 15x times or plus negative or 15x squared plus negative x to the squared. These are the same um, they're like terms because they have the same variable raised to the same power. 
but I have a positive 15 and a negative 8, so I end up with 7x squared. Negative 5x, negative 6x is negative 11x. So the answer to this problem, I'm going to do it this way so I have some space, is 20x to the third plus 7x squared minus 11x plus 2. And I hope you can see that if I tried to do this times this times this and this times this times this, there's lots of places to make mistakes, to drop terms, to forget about a negative. But if you really clearly in the box method have the positives and negatives labeled in a space for each, you're not going to have any trouble. So with that, I'm going to stop the video, email me questions, post them underneath this video in classroom. Um, one question in the class meeting was for 7-2, you can do the Pearson, you can do the book work and take a picture and email it to me, or you can just fill in the Google document that's in Google Classroom, but they're all the same exact work and you only have to do one version, so you choose. Um, I did have questions about grades from your classmates and I will tell you that if you're doing the work, if you're doing all of the assignments I'm posting um, and you're doing them fine, then I'm going to be giving you full participation points. If you have trouble, I will send it back to you and probably send you a video to help you because this is a credit high school class and I want you to be able to prove that you understand what you're supposed to know. If you're not participating or not doing um, enough of the work, this class will end up being an incomplete, which means that when we get back to school, hopefully, and things are back to normal in um, September, you would have some time to finish the class and not make it an incomplete. But I will tell you this, whatever we left class with in February or March, your grade is basically set there, and it can either go higher, stay there, or become an incomplete. If you, if you do some work, but it's not perfect, and you're sort of participating, it'll stay at the grade that you had. If you are participating, it will go up. And if you're not doing work, or you're doing hardly any, then you'll be getting an incomplete at the end of this year. One thing you need to know is that you can go back and redo any work. I've got two students who've already done work for first semester redone problem or redone assignments or turned in old work that they've never turned in and they have improved their first semester grade. You can do that too. Go look at Skyward and email me if you want to ha want help on getting um, any assignment you want to redo or even retake a test from first semester and we can see if we can get your grade to go up. Same is true for third quarter. If you ended third quarter with a C plus, there is no reason that you can't end this year with an A for third quarter. Yes, third quarter is over, but I can always go back into Skyward and change things. So please let me know any other questions that you have or where else you need some help. And I hope I will see you next Wednesday in our class meeting where we will continue doing some other activities.